can be at seeing the event. So if everyone would like to get into their seats and get seated, that would be great. Everyone, I would like to announce Vicki Reckman, escorted by Grant Langstaff. Carolyn <laughs> Langstaff, escorted by Jeff Martin. <laughs> Vanessa Langstaff, escorted by Nathan Hoffman. <laughs> Maid of Honor, Laura Langstaff, escorted by Best Man, Josh Bauman. And everyone, it'd be my honor to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Nathan and Rachel Gingrich. Everyone, could you please give a warm welcome for Paul Langstaff, the father of the bride, to give prayer. Could we bow our heads in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings today. We ask you to bless Rachel and Nathan as they begin their life together. And most of all, help them to have you uh, be the center of their home. We thank you for the food that's provided. We ask you to bless it to the nourishment of our bodies. For Jesus' sake, amen. Oh, that's 
ways we can think. And it's less noticeable, so it's great. <laughs> Thank you. Look forward to him. Yeah. You can hear me now. Hello, hello. Are right, you guys ready to eat? Are you ready to eat? That's what I like to hear. All right, we are going to start with the bridal party. You guys can go ahead and get your plates and come on up. And then I'm going to this tables just in sets. So tables one through three, so two through three. Um, after the bridal party, we're going to get up. Make them, make sure they can get through first. Tables two and three, you guys go next. And then we'll just dismiss tables as we go. Just take your plates and bring it up. You're gonna need them to reuse them. And then we also, uh, it's just buffet style. So as far as uh, dessert goes, that'll be provided once we kind of get everybody through the first course. So, all right, continue to mingle, enjoy the evening. Like a mom, a little more every day. 
was going on. So. start off the speeches, if I could have the parents of the groom, Elmer and Alma Gingrich, to come up and give their speech. Good evening, everybody. Can you all under hear and understand? Mm -hmm. Good, good. Just first of all, a very hearty thanks for all of you and just joining in uh, to make this evening special with the whole day, actually. <clears throat> and there's some people who put forth extra efforts, uh, as in uh, leading and preparing the food and leading in the decorations and various other things but you all helped to make this day complete just by being here. So thank you for uh, uh, taking this time for that. And we're just so blessed during the ceremony as well. It's the first time that we experienced our own child getting married and taking this step. So just a few things. <clears throat> The winter that Nathan was four years old, I attended sign language classes as we had that deaf man in our community. So he sometimes came along. <clears throat> young people can, young children easily pick up signs with Nathan being no exception and he soon had a number of signs memorized. <clears throat> Playing in the yard at home around the big snowman, Nathan started making signs to it. When asked what he's doing, he said, well, I thought maybe he could understand science because he can't talk or hear, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And there's also sometimes troubles with German and English, uh, just learning the Pennsylvania Dutch at home, then getting to school and wanting to learn the English that's uh, our heritage as in speaking Pennsylvania Dutch at home. In grade one, Nathan's teacher had the class cut out pictures of each of their family members. <clears throat> he soon had a picture of a man for a dad, a little boy and girl for himself and Lois, but could not find a mom. So finally, he puts up his hand for teacher assistance. Just a little explanation. In German, a woman is a Frau, and that translated into English can also mean wife. So the question posed to Miss Bowman was, could you please help find a wife for me? <laughs> I will, I think, personally contact this Miss Bowman. She is still teaching school. And tell her that her search can now end. <laughs> we do also, it's a great pleasure to welcome Ray to the family as a daughter. It's been a blessed time getting to know you over the past half year or a little bit more. <clears throat> Extra special as Nathan moved home at the beginning of December and then Rachel would come over quite often uh, from where she boarded and uh, I think the one thing that we'll miss the most is uh, your effervescent laugh. It's just so uplift uplifting and strengthening and just a buoyant and what not all that means so uh, yes it is great delight that we welcome you to the family. As we heard today, <clears throat> spending time together is the way we get to know people. And I cannot say that I ever saw Nathan come home from work when Rachel was there and his face clouded over, his eyes downcast and uh, everything went sour, no. His face lit up, his eyes started twinkling and the greeting was appropriate. <clears throat> so just keep spending time together, making personal time. That is so important in building relationships. <clears throat> that can seem a monumental task sometimes, but Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <clears throat> Two more verses. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. To this end, I know this, these verses are written for a different contact, context, but it can also apply here, and matter of fact, to any station in life. But in this uh, particular case, we're referring to the bridal pair for both of you. To this end, we always pray for you that our God would grant you, count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith by his power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord's blessings in the presence of his love now and always. Well, I'm not a very speechified person, so I won't have a lot to say, but I do want to welcome Rachel and her family, and we love you, and we look forward to getting to know each other more and more, and may the Lord bless you. Next up for their speech is the parents of the bride, Paul and Deborah Langstaff. And, and best man if you want to be on standby. <laughs> I would like to thank everyone uh, for coming and making this such a special day for Rachel and Nathan. And I'd especially like to thank all the ones that contributed in a big way, uh, working uh, with the food or, or with setup. And it's just so neat to see so many people that 
uh, were very supportive of <clears throat> Rachel and Nathan. And it was uh, deeply appreciated and didn't go unnoticed. <laughs> uh, a few years ago, <clears throat> a beautiful bundle of joy came into Deborah in my life in the form of Rachel. And if you know Rachel, you know like when she arrived, you knew she was there. <laughs> she was a determined go-getter, uh, a high achiever that was able to accomplish a tremendous amount. Uh, she finished uh, high school a year early and uh, <clears throat> got a job and, and worked for a year and then went to college and for five years and, uh, and uh, went to, she was always a caring, compassionate person and she went to Romania for a summer and worked with underprivileged children. She had a very kind and loving heart. And uh, <clears throat> Nathan, we always enjoyed when he came up to the farm and uh, he, was, he was a fine gentleman. And uh, I got a little story to tell on Nathan. One day he comes up to the farm and he has his boots and everything and he comes out to the barn. I thought, whoa, this guy is really something. He's gonna help in the barn. And so a bunch of the kids are in the barn and he's just around and doing whatever. And I go over in the shed to do something and Nathan follows me over to the shed and a bunch of the kids come to help too. And, and afterwards I realized the reason Nathan came, Nathan came to the barn and to the shed and all over the place following me was he wanted to talk to me. <laughs> but, the, but the kids were protecting me. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. But he did corner me after a while and tell me, hey, I think your daughter's really special. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I, I'll give you a call, Nathan, when hay season gets around. <laughs> I'll be looking for some help. <laughs> now, if you're anything like my kids, they'll say, Dad, we would come, but we've got some plans. We've got some things to do. So you can come up with a good excuse, and I'll let you off the hook. <laughs> yeah, um, I hope that Rachel and Nathan always keep God center in the relationship. You can have a tremendous marriage and uh, uh, you are the main person to benefit from that tremendous relationship you have with your husband and wife. But it also benefits the family, the church, and the community. And we just uh, hope God blesses you and you have a good life together. Thank you. Rachel was one of our most timid children growing up. Um, Paul could usually throw the kids up in the air and catch them, but she wouldn't let go. <laughs> she didn't like doing things like that. And yet at the same time, she was the most adventuresome of all of our kids. She was the first one to go off to college. She was the first one to uh, graduate. She was the first one to leave home. Um, she was the first one to go someplace overseas. Uh, she was the first one to move into a new location where there's nobody that she knew. Um, she did find somebody. <laughs> and um, we are, um, we, we love you, Rachel. Uh, we really uh, hope the best for you. And Nathan, we welcome you into our family and we're so glad that you're part of our family now. Uh, next up, Josh Bauman, the best man for a speech. <laughs> uh, and uh, the maid of honor, Laura Langstaff, if you want to be on standby. Well, I'll start off by saying this, I'm not much for speeches and I'm a little shy that way, so I'm going to start off by saying thank you, Nathan, for choosing me to be a best man. It was an incredible honor. 
and you have been an amazing friend of me for a number of years now. And we've had a lot of, a lot of really good memories together. I'll, I'll tell one story about me and my wife were married for a few years, and Nathan and I used to go snowmobiling together. So one winter night, winter I decided that we're gonna, I'm gonna take my wife up to Nathan's place. I'm gonna teach her how to snowmobile. Well, Nathan didn't have a whole lot of time to get the snowmobiles ready, and while my wife and I are on the one sled, we see him streaking across a field on the other sled, and there was a really bright green patch following the whole way across the field. I remember my, Annie was driving the snowmobile behind at the time, and she kind of looked back to say, is this what's supposed to be happening? And it wasn't long before that the snowmobile came to a very abrupt stop. <laughs> and it was not working anymore, so. It definitely made, definitely made for a very memorable experience. And yes, yeah, she did enjoy the snowmobiling, so that was also a bonus. Um, over the years, Nathan's come to our place a lot. He's watched our kids grow up. They still call him Uncle Nathan. And they, they perk up every time they see him. And it's been, had a lot of memories and hope we make a lot, hope, hopefully we make a lot more together. Thanks. around pre-COVID, like you should remember it because we all supposedly died. <laughs> and she called me up one day and she was pretty sad and kind of depressed because nobody was having get-togethers because it was illegal. <laughs> and she was like, how am I supposed to make any friends in this new area when no one's getting together or no one's hanging out? And me being the supportive person that I try to be sometimes, <laughs> told her, it's like, well, just remember Rapunzel met her true love while in quarantine in a tower in the woods. <laughs> and she laughed quite heartily at that and proceeded to tell me that that doesn't happen in real life and it would be nice if it did, but I was kind of, you know, whatever. But if you don't know how they met, <laughs> it was at what some would consider an illegal party during quarantine in the woods. So I wasn't too far off. And I guess you could say that fairy tales do come true sometimes. of the bride and um, I just I remember when I first met Nathan not too long ago um, I had come with my other sister Carolyn and our two nephews Trenton who was six at the time and Aiden who were three to visit Rachel and we went to a rodeo and the next day we went to church with her and for some reason I was just like okay we have a lot going on in the afternoon as soon as church is done Rachel's going to want to leave. And Aiden had fallen asleep, so she had gone out to the foyer and was standing holding him or sitting holding him. And so we, you know, got our stuff together and we we're all ready to go. And lo and behold, she wasn't really in that much of a hurry to leave. I thought, oh, well, not, okay, that's odd. Um, and there was also this guy who was just kind of standing around. And I thought, oh, I guess that's kind of odd. Uh, <laughs> So at that point, of course, I had no way of knowing that one day less than nine months later, that guy would be becoming my brother-in-law. 
So I'm so glad that he is, and um, I just wanted to say, Nathan, welcome to the family, and I look forward to many happy experiences and memories with you, and I wish you all both the best. And to my knowledge, the last speech we have is Rachel and Nathan, so if the bride and groom would like to come up. We just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, like Elmer said, you guys coming out today really made our celebration complete. We just feel so loved and by all the support that you guys show by being here and celebrating with us today. We also want to say thank you to everyone who had a hand in working so hard to make this day uh, just a fairy tale wedding for us. Um, we want to thank our moms and dads for all their love and support and um, always being sounding boards for us and getting us to this point. Uh, we also want to thank Miriam for do, leading, doing all the food. She did such a great job. Um, and all the aunts that helped with that, aunts and cousins. Uh, we also want to thank Julianne for her help leading the servers and um, making sure that all the food went well here at the barn today. We want to thank the Wagglers for letting us use their barn here. Um, it's such a beautiful place. Uh, and Shannon for decorating it all to look just perfect. And everyone who helped with all of those details. Um, we want to thank our photographer, Mel, for capturing our beautiful day, and also our videographer, Jeremy, and his wife was earlier helping um, with the, the videography. So, did I miss <laughs> Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for all the kind words and the well wishes. We really appreciate you taking time out to be with us today. I should also say thank you to um, Elijah for being our MC, to Jonathan for running the sound, and to my friend John for being the day of coordinator and making sure that we were always in the right place at the right time. <laughs> so we couldn't have done this without each one of you. Thank you so much. You can give yourself a hand. <laughs>
Well, thanks for coming, everyone. I think that is the end of it. So, hope everyone had a great night and everyone have a safe drive home who's driving home. He's not kicking anybody out, though. You are all welcome to say, stay. I am sorry if I felt like I was kicking you out. That's my bad. I'll, I'll take that one. <laughs>